Right. Should, should, should we give this, this? Should we give this a try? Should we give this a whirl? Sure. What's the name, though? And ah. Would you like to do the introduction? You know what? what, what, what should we wing it this week? See how, see how it feels. See, I see what feels natural. We can always edit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like this would kind of should we have like a maybe like a cold open each week. Sec. <laughs> my bag of crisps out of the way. I had a massive bag of crisps. <laughs> I didn't want to cook it and it comes up on the mic. I thought you were just like punching some shit or something. No, no. You just like randomly went <laughs> and started fucking just going half. But this is it. This is week one. Yeah. I'm excited. So am I. I mean, I, I feel like you can hear there's a, there's a slight air of like Ah, uh, in each of our voices. Yeah. Well. What? <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just jumping straight into it. I like that. Let's yeah. do this. Cool. Let's do it. And then this would be like where the theme song would go. I can be like, da 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 da. Your cousins and they watch movies. <laughs> but which one is better? Who knows? We're gonna pitch a movie. And then like the title screen would come up, but. You know how it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. You're all too kind. Woo! Ah! Car! Car! Is, is it just a bird in the audience for some reason? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah. This is it. This is week one. This is our our podcast N name as of right now. W to how we lean in. Determined. To be determined. I mean, that's not, straight out. Not the, not the, that, that, that's not the name, but... I don't know. I remember I shot uh, Reinventing the Real to you at one point. Yes, I, like I did write it. I like, I like it. If there's anything else that pops up, we can... Yeah, I like Reinventing the Real. RTR. Yeah. Rota, for sure. Hell yeah. So what are we doing right, so, here then? So basically, I thought the whole premise would be like, hey, let's take a film or a TV show, you know, whichever's one we pick out of a randomizer, um, and we're both going to go away and then there are like different things you can pick out of the randomizer as well yeah so we both pick the same film each week and then we pick whether it has to we have to pitch a sequel a prequel a rewrite or just like if it's a film change it to a show if it's a show change it to a film mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then after that there's a hat called the game changer hat and this is going to hold like just random criteria that we have to include into our rewrite so examples are, are must include one of the Franco brothers. Yeah, change it to an all female cast. Just exactly, like that. just to mix it up, you know. So this week, obviously, because it's the first episode, you know, we're laying down the groundwork. So we're gonna actually do a film together this week. We're gonna roll the randomizer, pick a film. Hopefully, we've seen it. I think there's a couple in there that I haven't seen. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know because. I definitely haven't seen either. Yeah, we could we could wing it if that's the case. If we both haven't seen it, we're just gonna have to like read the synopsis and go from there. Just have to pitch the film. What's the worst that could happen? Exactly. So, should we cool. jump right into this? Should we get it going? Let's, let's do it. Hell. So the first one we have to pick is whether it's going to be a complete rewrite, sequel, prequel, or a TV show, right? Yep. Sounds good. Cool. Roll that, baby. It's a complete rewrite. Hell yeah. Very nice. All right. Then, it's up to you, Matt. Do you want to take... Would you want to take the game changers now? So we're like, ooh, haha, and then find out what the film is we have to work to, or the other way around. Mm, let's take the game changers after. Yeah, I mean we can change it in in the weeks, but I think for now we'll take the game changes after. Okay, well here we go. Let's randomize the films and <laughs> yeah. What did we get? What is it? Okay, so there are how many films are there? there are ten films in the randomizer here. Mm -hmm. Well, there are, there are more films, but the top ten films were Black Swan. Yeah. You'll never really hear. Mm -hmm. Tangerine, Black Panther, 
Max, Mad Max Fury Road, Knives Out, Lady Bird, and then I think the top three are the best ones we could have gotten. Okay. But number three was Hereditary. Right. Number two was Spring Breakers. Okay. And at number one, and the very first episode we're going to do here on the show oh my God. is The Boy in Striped Pajamas. Tell me, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, we're starting off on a high note, wow. I, yeah. This is not planned, for by the context. way. <laughs> Just saying. No. For, for context, um, I don't find the movie inherently funny. I really don't. No, this situation, um, however. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is um a very hard subject matter, you know, but nevertheless, we'll do it justice. So then if we hit the randomizer on the... Mr. on the game changes and then we just take the top three yeah yeah Shloop. <laughs> should we do the top th- top three or do we do a like top five or so first, uh... i don't know read out read out the top three first and i'll have more okay so the top three are requires a random musical number <laughs> okay <laughs> okay number two so must star Michael Cera. Okay. Uh, number three is Admiration. That one's quite... Yeah, that, yeah. that works really well. But... <laughs> uh, if we were going to do top five, number four would be uh, The Bad Guy Wins. What? <laughs> and um, number five would be It Has to Star Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I, I kind of want to do top five just for that. I mean, we could, so do I. We could change it around. Uh, we could do just the top three, but the, we could pull from the, one of the top two if you want. Uh, or you just want to that, let's, do let's do it. Let's do, let's do top five. Because, I mean, realistically, the, the the bad guy does win in the end. In the original anyway, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, true. Oh, boy. All right. But do you do initial thoughts of the film itself? Uh, sure. I mean, last it... time I watched uh, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas was like in high school or something. <laughs> the last time I watched <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't usually go out of my way to watch The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, you know. But, you yeah, know, uh, yeah I, I'm not too, like, fresh on it. I know, like, some of the key scenes. I know they're always, like, sitting at the fence and stuff. Yeah. And, I don't know, the, the gas at the end. Mm. Uh, but you're gonna have to if you remember things you're gonna have to like like sh- sh- shout it out you're gonna have to give me yeah some point. Right, just for just for those at home who may not have seen it should i just like read out the yeah the, the, yes. so i just put here's us laughing and sounding like truly terrible people yeah. uh <laughs> here you go uh, so boy in striped pajamas was a 2008 film that came out directed by mark herman uh, based off a novel by John Boyne, and uh, it yeah, what's the synopsis here? Through the innocent eyes of Bruno, the eight-year-old son of the commandant at a German concentration camp, a forbidden friendship with a Jewish boy on the other side of camp fence has a startling and unexpected consequences. Right. Well, I hope that's uh, caught everyone up now at home and. I'm really sorry if we butcher this uh, film, this emotional film. I feel like we really are. I feel like, but yeah, just a, a a fair warning. I feel like in the coming weeks, I, I could see that this show going any manner yeah. of ways. I mean, nothing safe. We, we threw that in there just as a like, why not? You know, we did actually think we were going to get yeah. it, but. <sighs> Ooh, okay, so let's start with the cast then. May as well. It has to have right. uh, Steve Buscemi and Michael Cera. Right, that's doable. So if we take a look at someone, I, I, I'm on IMDb here. Got it up. Uh, I'm just looking at the cast and all the characters that we have. I don't fully remember what happened. So realistically, we can just cast like uh, the main kid. Wait, how many kids? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you know what? Who knows? Let's just let's roll with it. Let's go. So, since it's a rewrite, yeah. Do you want uh how 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 
we going to go about this? Because are we just going to follow the similar structure? We, I guess we can't really do that because so yeah. do you want to make it like it's sort of off it off of the source material and it's maybe set in the future or something? Or... Oh, that's a scary fucking future. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't know. It's because like it's very difficult to rewrite the boy in the striped pajamas when it's such a like like historical yeah fiction esque yeah so it's like rewriting his it's like that do you remember that episode of misfits and that like old jewish guy goes back in time to kill yeah. hitler yeah it's, it's real in the vein of that okay so first things first we so what what did we have to include it was uh Bashemi, mm-hmm. michael Sarah, and then musical number yeah very nice jesus that's gonna be so yeah first things first if we take a look at the cast would you want to recast anyone like inherently off the bat it was 2008 as a butterfield he played bruno yeah um, are we keeping him as his age or do we like <laughs> what does age mean? i mean you, you could keep him as his age and do like a, a sort of now thing and then yeah yeah, why not? We'll, we'll keep we'll, we'll keep his cast. I think we recast though the boy in the striped pajamas as Michael Cera, the, the titular <laughs> yeah. boy, as it were. Yeah, yeah, because okay, so <laughs> so this eight-year-old little German Asa Asa Butterfield, whatever yeah, his name is, is gonna <laughs> yeah. Oh, current yeah, age. Sure. Why not? Oh, because okay. oh, in my head, yeah, in my head, I had the visual of this eight-year-old boy, like going up to a fence to play with like thirty-year-old Michael Cera. I mean, that could work, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, let's face it, like he's a boy at heart, isn't he? He's, he'll always be uh, George Michael Junior. This is true. So, Azor and Michael are our two main characters. Okay. They are so. I like the idea of eight-year-old as a Butterfield going to play with a thirty-year-old Michael Cera. Sounds about right. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is tough though. Getting the rewrite part because, as I said, yeah. it's... I don't really remember a lot yeah. of it as well. What do I remember? I remember. Okay, so the main family are. Um. So it's it's Asa Butterfield and his yeah. family. And his, like, they just moved to, like, a new house or something. Yeah. And his dad's, like, an SS officer, geezer. Clearly, he, that should be Steve yeah. Buscemi. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what else? Um, he befriends a little Jewish boy on the other side of the fence. Uh, I remember there was a really weird scene, and his sister put up a poster of Hitler, like it, like it, like he was like in a boy band or some shit like that. We can, um, incorporate the musical number. Oh, Son of a bitch! Like... Yeah, like. Um, uh, have you ever seen the movie? Oh, was, it, was it a movie or is it? I know it was in theater. I can't remember if it was a movie first. Was it like? I can't remember the name, but they had. He was writing a musical, and it was like Hitler was like a drag queen or something. I think is it entertainers or no? I don't know. But where my head was going there was Hitler has a musical number and I don't know. Bloody hell. Yeah. I just did a I just did a search on that and it just came up with a load of RuPaul quotes apparently. So I don't, don't fancy looking no, into that. Fine, fine. <laughs> Never mind. The producers. It was called the producers. There we go. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're not. But yeah, so we'll come back to the musical number. I think I, my head just went like a million miles an hour there, thinking about Hitler doing a musical number. So how are we starting? Is it still gonna be the n- new kid in the big city kind of vibes? Yeah. Or nice new kid on the block as a butterfield rocks up, eight years old, and he's like, "Oh my god, yeah, like, this is my life now. I'm in 2020 <laughs> with my family." <laughs> <laughs> right words, I am. Oh boy, my dad's a SS officer, and then he like 
I don't know. He, he like gets out the car. He's got <laughs> bags and stuff. Little as Buzz put on, and his dad comes out like, "Hey, you know, I gotta go to work. <laughs> <laughs> don't follow me." <laughs> Bloody hell! Da 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 da. Again, this is a drama set in the yeah horrid events of World War Two. So, and uh, we we decided to give the main Nazi of the film the voice of Randall Boggs from Monsters Inc. So, you know, you don't really get much more evil than that, do you? Oh my god. <laughs> Of all the first episodes. Uh, look, real question: like, If this is taking part in, like, place in twenty twenty, we, we, we've got to, we've got to address the elephant in the room. What's what's going on with Nazis? What's their well, deal? Obviously, at the time of recording this, it's seventh, uh, seventeenth, sorry, of November. We haven't got to December yet yeah. in twenty twenty, so you never know what could happen. Son of a bitch, yeah. you're not wrong. So uh, I don't know. Let's just say I'm not going to get political. But a certain um, president lost the election, and uh... oh, that that sounds pretty on the nose, man. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Not to drop any names or anything, but uh... well, uh, well, a lot of people were, aren't happy about that, and there's an uprising, and. Um... <laughs> <laughs> This is all just happenstance, of yeah. course. You know, this, this is this is clearly a work of fiction. In no way are we uh, alluding to. Um... <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> all right. I'm kind of getting like, oh, just off the bat, I'm kind of getting like Coraline vibes. Like, like she's arrived at the new house. She doesn't really have any yeah. friends. She's like, oh, what's going on? Oh, I want some friends. So she so should we get into the action as quick as possible? Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we we'll kind of skip the fluff, you know. I mean, set the setting. Yeah. Modern day, I guess. Modern day Boy in the Stripes. Yeah. Film is nice. The uh the quotation marks new Nazis. Like fucking Gremlins too, the new bat. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I don't know if we can kill these ones with water, but what's the... <laughs> <laughs> that's the tagline on the poster. <laughs> it's just deep as Chevy in an SS costume. Shrugging, like, oh, what are you going to do? Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Yeah. So modern day new Nazis. Um, the world has reverted back, you know, and we've lost mm. the connections of like internet's gone down. You know, we can't make phone calls. It's hard to like see your friends nowadays. You know, people are kind of struggling yeah. with this new way of life with no technology. Like the sound of that. I like this because yeah, it isolates it. It gives like a reason for him to not just be on yeah, TikTok and constantly. Not keep in touch with the guy on the other side of the fence. I, I mean, I can think of another few reasons why he wouldn't be able to keep in touch with him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah. <laughs> if only there was some kind of way he couldn't keep in touch. Yeah, that's our, that's our well, world well built. Okay. And yeah, as, it, as we said many times, He's just arrived at his new house. Uh, he's got no friends. Yeah. He's like, oh, this is my new world I live in. I don't know how I'm going to relate. I'm pretty remote, you know. But where do we go from here? Are we just going to set up a family dynamic, you know, wake up in the morning? Should we have, like, a, a classic yeah, like, yeah. dinner scene? Yeah, breakfast. One of the two. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm just thinking, does Dad go to work or does he come home from work? Oh, this is good. This is good. Um... Oh, I don't know. 
I feel like whatever. Uh, what's uh, An early morning scene would be like a nice setup. He wakes up in the morning like oh, or he, something like that. Or oh, it's <laughs> my head's going a billion miles an hour right now because I'm thinking oh. We need a scene of him obviously going into the place, into his house. Like, oh, he's established his yeah. role, I guess. And then, uh, so maybe the next day he unpacks his things. Next day he wakes up, you know, some upbeat song playing. You wouldn't think this is the new boy in the striped pajamas with, like, because it's all framed nice, even though, like, the world's gone to rubbish. So. Okay, so there's only one song that on. can be on them. It's got to be Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. Yeah, it really sets the tone for the rest of the film. <laughs> Actually, no. Strike that. I, I, yeah. Can I change my answer to um, Play My Music by the Jonas Brothers? Yeah, yeah, I, I think if it's 2008 as a Butterfield, then why not? In this new 2020. Yeah. All, they, all they have is Jonas Brothers CDs, so he that's what he does when he wakes up in the morning, presses play on his old <laughs> CD player, and then you just hear the lovely voice of Nick Jonas. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was more Joe. So I I can't really do it. Wakes up, you see him like brushing his teeth and stuff. His mom's like, ah, oh, breakfast, and he's downstairs. <laughs> hey, so, baby. Like, Everything looks normal. It's like, oh, you got to go to school. And it's like, oh, but I don't want to. I don't know if he goes to school or not. I can't really remember. Or if he's homeschooled or whatever. Yeah, no, so, neither do I. Let's just say he goes to school and no one likes him there. But before that, he's like, yeah. his sister's like picking on him. Like, ha you idiot. All that kind of playful jousting and whatnot. And then yeah. Steve Jemmy just walks in. And he's like, oh, honey, where did I leave my hat? And you're like. Yeah, like the like... live studio for you and start the cast. <laughs> that type of thing. And then, um, you know, he, he puts on the hat and then just the music stops and then you're like, oh God, that looks strikingly familiar to a <laughs> World War II hat. What's, what's going on here then? And then like turns on the TV and, oh, just uh, it's been so many days since the new Nazis have taken over. And... <laughs> <laughs> I love that they branded themselves the new Nazis. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like the new Avengers type thing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, there's like news report like on setting up like, oh, this is actually a bleak, dark world, and you know maybe the the camera filter changes and stuff, and you're like, oh god, is it? This is actually the boy in the striped yeah. pajamas, not the boy who has a happy life. So, so like from like what we're saying here, I'm picturing like a yeah. breakfast then, yeah. We could have like a like a brief montage of the breakfast. So it's like it's him sat at the table, and you just see like his mum in the background cooking the same thing. His sister like nagging him in the same way. His dad's not there because he's at work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can really get a sense of like this the feeling of isolation this young man has. So he uh he just he just ventures off one day. He's like, you know what? I'm going out. I'm doing me. I'm doing my own thing. I like that. And uh, he he stumbles across um his dad, but he can't like he, his dad doesn't see him. Mm. He can just see his dad, and he's like, oh, there's my dad. So uh, he follows on after him, but like keeps his distance because his dad just been like, hey, you know, stay out of my office. You know, we we don't talk about my work. And um, he sees a man with a gun, and his dad's just gone missing. So he's like, oh, shit, what's going on here? Well, where's my dad gone? So, he, of course, he's scared of a man with a gun, so he, he runs away and hides behind a fence. Not behind a fence, like behind a, um, a box, yeah. which is next to a fence. And he's like, oh, that was close. And he just hears, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> and he turns to his right. And who is it? It's Michael Cera. See, uh, mm-hmm. for my vision of this boy in the striped pajamas, as it were, I feel like the new Nazis—they're not—they're not as uh, as trivial as the old Nazis. You know, they're not as stupid as them, as it were. Not, you know, they're like oh, blonde hair, blue eyes. Is that, uh, uh, no, what they're fascinated with 
a washed up movie actors. So they, they have this giant like um, uh, 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 compound, as it were, filled with, with disgraced washed up actors left to right. We're talking Macaulay Culkin. We're talking Elijah Wood, let's be honest. We're talking uh, Carmen and Junie oh, from Spy Kids. National treasures. Exactly. Did you know the guy, Junie, do you know he's married to um, Megan Trainor? Yeah. Fuckery. Good for them. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> so he's like, oh, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm Hollywood's Michael Cera. Who are you? <laughs> and the little boy's like, oh, my name is Bruno. Um, and he's like, oh, that's a cool name. Did you ever see the, the Sasha Baron Cohen film? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, no, I'm eight. He's like, yeah, fair play. Fair play, Keys. Um, <laughs> you can really yeah. tell this off first week. <laughs> so, okay, how we... Because, I mean, let's be real, like, there's there's no real, like, where are we going with this? I don't know. <laughs> I already don't know. What, oh, what's well. the end? Because I think we're kind of just killing time until the end comes. Well, the end, does our washed up movie actors get gassed? Or, or do they find a way out of it through the means of musical theatre? <laughs> I don't, ah, I don't know. I, mm. well, what if we save the musical number and we give it to Steve Buscemi? Yeah. So it's like he's just had a he's just had an argument with his wife, and it's like, okay, I'm picturing, you know, like Camp Rock too, right? And like they're both singing, and they're like, oh, we're so different. Or like, you know, the much better High School Musical yeah. too. I've got to go my own way. Mm. That kind of vibe, you know. So the mum, who is played by, who, who should we cast as as his um... wife? Who would believably be married to Steve Buscemi? But I'm thinking she has to be out of his league a little bit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think. Uh, is is the mum from Hereditary? Yeah. Oh, Tony Collette. That's not yeah. bad. I like that. Let's do it. So, Tony Killett and Steve Buscemi are like l- looking into each other's eyes, and then here comes like a, a big musical number. So, uh, if we get, I feel like if we do a big musical number in the future, you know, we will have had, we'll have something like somewhat yeah. written up, as it were. But do not just wing it? Do not go for it? Let's let's do it. Let's go. What you want to sing? I... Let's do it. Let's go. Who um, would you rather be? Ah, oh, sure. I'll be Tony Collette. Why not? All right, um, cool. All right. So, husband, <laughs> why <laughs> have you? <laughs> what did I say about coming home? Bloody wife, leave me now. I'm going to my study. You always do this. You, bro. What? Pass away. Can this wait till another day? I'm waiting another day. Get out of my way. Do you not care? Why is it going to oh, be so sorry. this way? You always leave it out today. Why is it oh. going to be this way? You know, I really love. Yeah. To say. <laughs> Do you not care what I do for you and Bruno? And also our daughter who hasn't got a name that you know? <laughs> we should be a happy family playing games but like yet Uno. you're killing all the washed up actors, oh. <laughs> 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 The world's a better place without Mr. Home Alone. The world's a better place when short, which, without Sean Bean from Game of Thrones. But why is it gotta be this way? 
our sons <laughs> running off to play. Why is it gonna be this way? I'm pretty sure Michael Sierra is doing something with him. I don't know. I'm losing it. I'm just. No, 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 keep it going, keep it going. We're riding the way. And then there's then there's like a little breakdown. And it's like, who am I? What do I do? Do I even care what I put my family through? My wife, she hates my guts. My son, not as much. But I don't know. But I don't know. But I don't know if I can let it go. So why is it going to be this way? For I! <laughs> Bruno going through this chain. Why is it going to be this way? And then like Bruno. Nazis taken away. My husband. <laughs> You gotta pay the troll toll if you want to get it. <laughs> I, I, I feel like we should call it a day, man. <laughs> I, I liked it. I like quite a bit of it. What I'm thinking there, then, is Bruno sees his, his parents arguing and finds out that his dad's a new Nazi. Because somehow he didn't, yeah, he didn't put two and two together. He so he him. runs off. He's like, Hollywood's Michael Cera. Can you... I can't believe it. My dad's a new Nazi. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah. he's over there. <laughs> Just see him, like, like, whipping all these actors. Like, uh, so, I guess from there, it's like, oh, what are we going to do? He's like, uh, I'm just... he's like, I don't know, man. I'm just... I don't even know why they put me here. I'm, I'm not even that bad. And then, it's like, well, Bruno turns to him, he's like, oh, well, I, I want to get you out of there. And all these other actors, too. My, my dad's not going to hurt any of you anymore. And he's like, oh, whatever. You're, you're only an eight-year-old, so you, just, you do you do whatever you do. And then from there, <laughs> we see an eight-year-old as a butterfield trying to break out uh, this child. that Not child. What am I on about? This uh, <laughs> Michael Sierra, yeah, this <laughs> thirty-five-year-old child. Oh, you've said that. Do you know what I'm picturing? I'm picturing yeah. him like calling up his old friend. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "You <laughs> son of a bitch, I'm in." <laughs> so now this re- dramatic retelling of the Boring Strike dramas, modern day, turns into a heist film <laughs> of how <laughs> a eight-year-old as a Butterfield must break out. TV's Michael Sierra. Bruno's seven. <laughs> a, a, a Buscemi seven. What you? His dad's name is also Steve yeah, Buscemi I'm... in the context of the movie. Right, when you get that washed up, you end up working for them. Like, son of a bitch, this man, he, he can still pull, it, pull out some good one-liners. He's in. Sign him up. Give him a uniform. Why not? <laughs> He's, by the way, um... New Nazis and all this. Steve Buscemi is not a Nazi. Just putting it out there. Just have to premise. Wait, is he not? Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh in real life? Uh, this, yeah. It's just this movie. Awesome. I, I, I really don't know how to go about the rest of this. <laughs> Neither do I, man. I feel like we're, we're really oh, just... Yeah. We're, we're throwing shit at oh. the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like well, we hit all three of our yeah. criteria. We need uh, a big okay. climax. What's, what's going to so happen? We skipped all the heist prep, I guess. And yeah, they're about to pick yeah. up the big job. But uh, I don't know. So, something goes wrong. And Steve catches Bruno. He's like, oh, what are you, what are you doing trying to break out all these <laughs> brushed up eggs? And then uh, Bruno just goes up. Mm-hmm. Well, Dad, you, you, can't be, you can't be doing this. This isn't how the world should be. You should all spread peace, love, and positivity. <laughs> Son of a bit, there's a second musical number. And so that goes through. I, w- I don't want to put anyone else through out of our random music number. That goes on and then. What, but while this musical number's going on, 
all the washed up packs are just getting rounded up and sadly they're being put into this machine and you see them all step in there and they're like oh this this looks good is it am i am i uh trying out for a new role and then like they all just get crushed together <laughs> Oh my god! Then, <laughs> oh my like, god. all you hear is like some random machine noises, and you hear ding. Just one, like, perfect actor walks out, all fused into all these one washed up actors. Like washed up. I think who's it played by? Time to pull the Brendan Fraser card and bring him back, and he Son is the a culmination bitch. of what he is like. Washed up actor Jesus. He, he, yeah, I'm I'm picturing like yeah. shitty Deadpool from X Men Origins. So he comes out and he's like, "Oh, look, look at me!" And he just stares Steve Buscemi down and it's like, "Oh, what have we created? Do you think God stays in heaven because he <laughs> created?" <laughs> As a fun reference to. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. What happens next? Oh, right. So it's raining and there's mud everywhere. It's like thunder and lightning in the background. It's like. <laughs> and then Brendan Fraser, the monster. Let's just call him. We'll call him BF. BF comes sprinting towards. Um, Steve Buscemi, because he's like, what am I? What have you created? I'm a monster. And Michael Sarah's like, nah, none of that. <clears throat> Hold this elbow. That's, that's his elbow. <clears throat> gives him gives him the what for. There's a and then um Steve Buscemi's like, no, don't destroy him. He's 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 beautiful. He's a he's my masterpiece. So it turns into a big freeway battle between the three of them. Anyway, shit's hitting the fan, as it were. Um, and then Brendan Fraser Monster, as it were, you know, all the old TV stars and whatnot. Um, he, he, like, stands on top of a building. And he harnesses all the lightning in the sky. And he shoots, a, like, a fat lightning bolt. Like, picture, like, Azula. Like, yeah. lightning bending. Like, right at his heart. And like you see the lightning bolt flying through the air, and it's gonna hit um, Steve Buscemi, and then Bruno jumps in the way, and it bounces off of Bruno, and it hits the medal that oh. um, his dad gave him, and it hits oh. Michael Cera as well. And there he is, Steve Buscemi stood alone because the lightning bolt was too much power to handle, and it yeah. ripped Brendan Fraser to shreds. So Steve Buscemi stood there all on his own. Son is creation. What has he done? That is, ins- I think that's a good place to end it. To be fair, it's a sad, somber ending. Wow. So yeah, that was a rewrite of uh, the boy in the striped pajamas. <laughs> yeah. That was very powerful stuff. Two musical numbers, and uh, I mean, it, you could clearly tell this is the first episode, and we, you know, we just try it. We're, we're trying things out. I think next episode. If you'll have me, of course. Yeah. We'll uh we'll be more written, so we'll have time to work on it. So what we'll do now, I guess, is we'll run the randomizer again and we'll just pick some films yeah. between us. So would you like okay. to go first or shall I? I mean you're running them, but I'll I'll, I'll pick you I'll pick your ones first. Let's do this. Okay. So Oh you son of a bitch. All right. You got knives out, okay? And your randomizer okay. must have a director cameo. Has to be rated R. And it has to have one yeah, Franco. What are my other ones? What's my uh? Sorry. Am I? What's my? Am I rewriting it? Am I doing a sequel? Okay, you are. It's a prequel. All right, I like that. A prequel. So if you want, you could just do yeah. like a, another Benoit Blanc story. That sounds like it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of twists and turns. You're going to have to like figure out there, but. Feels... <laughs> I feel like this can end yeah. well. Yeah, it should end better than this, um, I think. Oh, 100%. It can't be any worse than this. Set the bar low, so then after it, we can just fucking crush it. Hell yeah. Exactly. It can only go up. Your film? My film is 
Okay, well, I got boy in striped pajamas again, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna randomize it again. I got hereditary. I'll take that. Okay. And my top three are it has to be an all male cast, it has to be rated R, and it has to star Steve Buscemi. So, uh, if you can re roll any of those if you want, or you're gonna keep it. No, I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. I feel like Super Chevy's gonna be a a recurring <laughs> character here going forward. All right then. Well, this has been the first episode of Reinventing the Real. Uh, I've enjoyed myself very much. I can't wait to do this. Yeah. This has been. Well, I can't I'm very much to it Listen to this back as well because it's gonna just be like an absolute shit show. Yeah. <laughs> Just all over the place. Yeah, next week. But yeah, I'll see you next week then, man.